Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war and peace, those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure, and all who lived and died in the service of their country and mankind. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all the people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, who sent your Son to die that we might live, grant, we pray, eternal rest to those who gave themselves in sacrifice and service for their country. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is bright and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble. You will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert for her, and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her, and graciously shows herself to those as they go, in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that as that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took the lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take the lamps, but they brought no oil whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, 
I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Remembrance Sunday, a day when local communities throughout the land would have normally gathered in large numbers to remember all those who died in the two world wars and in wars and conflicts since. Because of the restrictions under which all of us are currently living, these commemorations will have to take place in a more private, yet still reflective and respectful way. As Catholic Christians, an integral part of our remembrance is to pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died. In the second reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, we heard St. Paul address the Christians of his day. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, he says, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. With such thoughts as these, he goes on, you should comfort one another. This is the faith and hope that underlies our prayers for the dead and the love which is the motivation for our remembrance of them. It's important that we remember in our prayers too all those who in our society today lived during the Second World War, many of whom would have been at that time children or young people who now, in the elderly years of their lives, are yet again experiencing further fear and trauma as a result of the current pandemic. A great number of these men and women will now be isolated in their homes or care homes by the lockdown and unable to gain comfort from the presence of their friends and families. Let us then keep them especially, firmly in our hearts and prayers during this Mass today. As you know, for the next four weeks we are required to restrict our movements and our gathering as parish communities. And our ability to celebrate Mass together is again affected. Until this weekend, we had, since July, been able to assemble in safe numbers to celebrate the sacraments. But this was made possible only thanks to the incredible generosity and dedication of so many of you in our parishes who have taken voluntarily the responsibility as stewards 
for the cleansing and supervising of the safe opening of our churches. I wish to express my immense appreciation to all of you today. Like the lamps filled by the precious oil which symbolizes the fuel of faith and kept burning brightly by the wise bridesmaids in today's gospel parable, you too really are living lamps burning brightly in our parishes. Other living lamps of faith too are the parishes and religious communities who are providing a variety of vital charitable activities which support some of the most vulnerable people. Lamps are the young people in our diocese who are helping with the distribution of newsletters and information to the homes of sick, elderly and housebound parishioners. Lamps, too, are the staff in our Catholic schools who are sustaining the education of our children. The healthcare workers and chaplains in our hospitals, care homes and communities. And lamps, too, are our clergy and religious who have adapted their ministries to reach out to the spiritual and pastoral needs of the faithful and those who are just struggling to cope. All of you are giving light in times and places when it is most needed. Rightly, this is a day on which we remember each year all those who in death made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives during conflict and war in the hope that others might live in freedom and peace. But it is right too that in November we remember in prayer all those who have died over the last year and remember with gratitude all who today are living their lives in the service of others. Central to the celebration of every Mass is the command of the Lord to do this in remembrance of me. It is in that one unique act of remembrance we call the Eucharist, which for a Christian gives remembering the life of every human person, living or dead, its true meaning and significance. It is the remembrance of the cross of Christ and the sacrifice of his body and blood which shows us the path from death to life in this world. And it is through our prayerful participation in that sacrifice that the door of our tomb will be opened and we will be raised up to eternal life with him in the world to come. And so, in remembrance for the faithful departed, we pray. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in our weakness the Lord upholds us and fills us with good things. Let us with confidence offer the Lord our humble prayers for the needs of the church and the world. For the church, may the tireless preaching of the gospel of salvation to all people be given a visible expression in our generosity in coming to the aid of those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, as we commemorate Remembrance Sunday, may those in government and positions of leadership strive to promote just peace and seek an end to warfare and violence in all parts of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for a swift end to the current pandemic, for those suffering its effects, both directly and indirectly, for those working to bring it to an end, and for the goodwill and cooperation from all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who are sick at this time, at home, in hospital or hospice, remembering in particular those injured in wars and armed conflicts. May they receive the strength to unite themselves to Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, in particular in present wars and armed conflicts, and for those who died in the pursuit of peace, that they may gaze eternally on their Creator and Redeemer in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to join her prayer with ours. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on our humble prayer, and grant that what we ask of you in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.
humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. May this incense arise in your presence, O Lord, like the prayers of your faithful. May your love and your mercy come down upon us. May the Lord wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Heavenly Father, that the sacrifice of Christ, who laid down his life for his friends, may raise all those who have died in war to the victory of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty 
and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Dominus Deus Abaiot, Leni sum Ceni et Terra, Gloria Tua, O Samar in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, O Sana, in you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remember for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May eternal life be We 
tollis peccata mundi, dona mobis pace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Keep me safe for eternal life. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. of Christ.
Let us pray. By our communion with this sacrament, O Lord, grant us, we pray, fortitude in the cause of right. And may our remembrance of those who have died in war make us ardent defenders of your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and Our help is in the name of the Lord. May, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.